This video is an attempt to answer questions you have and questions you didn't know you had. It is mainly about the AI version, but you'll learn a lot of stuff for the manual version also. So you should watch this video even if you have a manual version. And for the AI version, you should watch the three videos that are about the manual version also because you'll learn the concepts of the AI. What is the difference between the manual version and the AI version? Well, there's no difference at all if you upgrade the manual version to the AI version. The only difference would be the icon. Also, the upgrade cycle. See the end of the video about the upgrade cycle. First, what can the AI do? It's better to say what the AI can't do. For instance, I got this image from a user and I can't tell what the main vertical surface is in this view. So the AI is not going to be able to tell either. What it's looking for are objects like this, where it has a main vertical surface. There can be trees in the way, there can be bushes in the way, but something there to give the AI a handle to grab. All right, let's go back to this view. Even though there's no main surface in here, you can still use it this photo. It's just that you'll have to use a manual version of the frames and you can start moving it around to a place that you want to measure. So what is the AI doing? As you'll find it takes a bit of time to set the frames and the marker. What the AI does, it does a good job of finding those frames and the proportions quickly. What it is not doing is finding the scale. So when it finishes you'll correct the scale and that is done also very quickly. Double tap on a dimension and change one dimension to the correct dimension. Tap on the green icon to confirm. Then all the dimensions become that new scale. So for the AI version, you need to know one dimension. For the manual version, you need to know two dimensions to fill out the marker. That is the advantage of the AI version, along with being very quick at setting up the frames. Let me show you example photo that I got from a user that can illustrate a bunch of points. Now it's very simple. It's just one elevation. There's a tree in the way, but let's run it through the AI and see what happens. Now the user was wondering why the dimensions were so far off, you know, after you've corrected it, of course. Let me correct one of them to something reasonable. So I immediately started investigating the photo. And here's a trick you can use. You can bring, you can use the top edge of the screen to look how straight things are. When I did that, I noticed that the eave on the left side, you can't see it quite well, so I'm gonna bring this down. On the left side, the eave is way off from the right side. So either the AI didn't do the perspective correction correctly, or as what I suspected was, that the foundation had settled. So I asked the user, did the foundation settle on this house? And he said, yes, it settled about one and a half feet. So that's what's going on. The, the AI is good, but not that good. The eave is curved. You can't quite see it because the tree's in the way, but you could still use this photo. What you have to do is go back to the original photo, and now it has the frame on it, of course. And it's also got the marker. The marker is really small in this case. And redo the frame. Now the frame is all right. It's it's encircling the whole thing. So what I'll do is I'll tear off the dividers and use them. And the trick here, another trick, is that you don't have to go clear across the screen. So what you can do is find the best option. And in this case, it's the right half of the eave. The dimensions will be slightly off on the other side of the house, but they'll be pretty darn close. As a matter of fact, when I did this, it came up with the exact dimensions that he was after. So, oh, and one thing about the dividers is always have the top divider on top of the bottom divider if you use both. If you don't use both, you have to have the bottom of the frame lining up but I'll use the bottom divider, tear it off. And I'm doing this fairly quickly. You'll want to line this up a lot better than what I'm doing. And of course, the same with the right divider and the left divider. Make sure that the 
right dividers on the right side and the left dividers on the left side. Don't mix those up or you're going to get a really strange view. Which was another question that I had actually. Uh, they sent me the photo and I told them to do a screenshot and when I looked at it the uh, bottom divider was on top of the top divider. So I corrected it, showed him the screenshot, and then he immediately got what was going on. So for those using the manual version, this is how you do the dividers. Find the best vertical lines and the best horizontal lines. And you'll notice that the horizontal lines do not go clear across the image. The longer they are, the more accurate your dimensions will be and your perspective correction will be, but when you can't, just use the best one you can. Now, if you've moved the frame or the dividers, you have to redo the marker also. I'm going to double tap to lock it so I can move the whole thing. And he had told me what the dimensions were of the window. And then I typed in the dimensions of the window. 0.75 or so. And then ran it through. And then when I started measuring things, everything was correct. The length of the house, which I'll put a new dimension on for the length here which came out to what he said that the dimension of the house was. Let me lock that to a horizontal. Oh, also, if you've changed the frame and marker, any dimensions that you did have on the worksheet will now be pointing at different things or different spots. So you may want to just cut those away and start over with new dimensions. Again, I'm not being that accurate, as accurate as what you should be. And this is what he had for the house. I can't remember what it was. I think it was, it was 50, well, it was 50 feet. And then I think it was 11 inches or so, 50 foot 11. So anyway, so the two things that can go wrong is you have a photo that looks like this, which the AI will not be able to find a vertical surface on. If it does do a perspective correction, it probably will be wrong for the surface that you are looking for. But you can always revert back to the manual version and find the surface that way. You'll need two dimensions with the marker, one dimension with the AI. Okay, another thing. Let's go to this one. And that was the perspective correction that it did. I'm going to move all these dimensions down a little bit. Lock this so it moves it in the vertical way. Save that. I'm also going to change the scale because the dimensions were too big. There we go. Okay, so what's going on with this image? This image has three surfaces. And the AI, because all three surfaces have the same perspective correction, they will all be correctly proportioned. However, Two of the surfaces will have one scale, the third surface will have a different scale because they're set back from each other. What do you do about that? I've already done the middle section, so we'll start there. Let me move this dimension down too. And this one. Let's put it right there. Let's move this one up out of the way. All right, so these three dimensions are now correct. These dimensions are incorrect because they're set back about uh, four feet. So they'll be slightly off. What do you do about that? Grab this tool, encircle these, and lock them. Now, no matter what you do with this dimension, it will always stay the same. And this is what I call dumb dimensions now. And you can create dumb dimensions on your own, which a lot of apps do as a dumb dimension. And there was a request 
several requests for dumb dimensions, so I put it in, put a dimension across, double tap, type in what you want it to be, and hit the lock button. And now, wherever you move it, it will still be the same. All right, so we've locked these three dimensions, and now we want to get the scale correct on this surface. So I'm going to need two measurements. I had already typed in the middle section. Now I need another dimension for these two other sections. So I have to measure something on that surface, figure out what it is. Let's say we had that. Looks like I don't have a one across the window, so I'll just put one in and put a dimension across this window. Okay, so I'm going to double tap on this, get this dimension right, tap on the green icon to confirm, and it changed every dimension that was not locked. This dimension did not change because we have it locked. You can unlock them also that way. And these three dimensions did not change because those were locked. So that's how you can scale two to three to four or six different surfaces as long as those surfaces all have the same perspective correction. Okay, another question I had from users is, okay, you've got a surface and I've made a mistake or something else is going on and I, or I want a third surface, just hit the button again, or second surface, hit the button again and you, you can do a second surface that way. If you want to delete a surface, go back to the project, find it, make sure you have the right one, go into edit, and delete surfaces that way. One final thing, what do you want? You want updates, you want new features, you want bug fixes, and you want them yesterday. And how do you get that? The lifeblood of these apps are App Store user reviews, your reviews. I know what you're thinking, let the next guy do the review, but 99.999% of the people are thinking just like you. You are actually in competition with my other apps and other versions of this app. The more thoughtful reviews that I get for other apps, the more time I'll spend on them to fix those and get new features in those first. I need thoughtful reviews before I can spend the time and energy on doing the new features and the bug fixes and the updates. And if you do have a problem with the app, instead of leaving a review, email me. I'll see what I can get fixed or what I can add.